Uh, Minister Andrews, uh, Leader of the Opposition Short and Palsic, Chester uh, members and senators, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, can I start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present and could I acknowledge other Indigenous Australians that are present here today. Look, it's quite an honour for me uh, to be asked to uh, help launch this initiative today, Parliamentarians Against Family Violence. And I thank the co-conveners for um, the invitation to do so. There's no doubt in my mind that the key to eliminating um, family violence is to first tackle the issue of violence against women, and that's probably where most of my remarks will be focused on this afternoon. Uh, you, heard, you heard the stats from Tim. Uh, I won't repeat them again, but they are stats that need to be repeated regularly so that people understand the magnitude of the issue that we're dealing with. And it's not just the statistics that need to be repeated, it's the human stories and the impact that needs to be understood. But most of all, it is men who need to understand these statistics. It's men who need to understand the impact because, frankly, it's men who are the problem. And it is only men, it is only men that can solve this problem and end what I think and I think you all think is a scourge on our society. Now, I vividly remember nearly 40 years ago seeing several incidents of domestic violence in the small community that I lived in. I don't remember much uh, in great detail about that time, but those incidents are seared into my brain and I can see them as clearly today as I could then. Uh, it just underscores the impact that this has on people. And it was one of the reasons that I got involved uh, with, with Libby and Steve uh, at White Ribbon, became a White Ribbon ambassador. And then as Chief of Navy, we embarked on an aggressive program to get the Navy accredited as a White Ribbon workplace. Uh, I would have to say that um, there was some reluctance at first to embrace this, um, but that's what strong leadership is all about. And I think I drove them crazy over the course of the uh, 12 or so months that it took to go through what was, was quite a demanding process, and it should be demanding, to be able to say that you're an accredited white ribbon workplace. Uh, about two weeks before uh, I left the job, um, we achieved that accreditation and the Navy is now the largest organisation in this country that is an accredited white ribbon workplace and that's something that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, uh, out of the three years of Chief of Navy it's one of the things that I am proudest of. Uh, the Royal Military College Duntroon uh, is also an accredited white ribbon workplace. A much smaller organisation but symbolically very important given the trials and tribulations of Duntroon over the years. Uh, the Australian Defence Force Academy, just after I took over as the Vice Chief and took over responsibility for ADFA, uh, is now on the path uh, to accreditation, as is the Army. In 2015, the Air Force will start the accreditation process. So by 2016, the entire Australian Defence Force will be an accredited white ribbon workplace. And I think that is a significant achievement for all those who like to focus on the negatives about the Australian Defence Force. I think this is a very, very positive story. And the great thing about White Ribbon is that it's led by men. And for us in a male-dominated environment, it's so important to have male role models to spread this message. Uh, on Friday, uh, down by the lake, uh, I led over 700 mostly young men uh, of the ADF in swearing the White Ribbon Pledge to never to commit, excuse or remain silent about violence against women. What really impressed me about that recitation of the pledge on Friday was the passionate way in which those 700 mostly young men uh, did that pledge. And that gives me great hope for the future for the ADF. Now, White Ribbon is clearly about education and awareness and prevention, but it would be wrong of me not to talk about the amazing uh, organisations in this country 
that either advocate or provide services to those who are directly impacted by uh, family violence. And I think uh, there's a number here today and, and I would like to pay my personal respects to those people involved in that work, that really important work, uh, which is often unheralded, but so important. But the other important piece, I think, is the policy and the legislative piece. Uh, that really only you as a collective, as a parliament, can bring to bear on this important issue. So the formation of this group, I think, is crucially important. And in combination with the impact that you have at the grassroots, at your electorates, or in the states that you represent, I think uh, it's a powerful combination. And I applaud the, uh, the co-conveners of this initiative, and I hope this group makes a real difference, because it needs to, and it's with great pleasure that I launched this initiative.